Hi, it's Marie Patterson with Archive360, and uh, thank you to the team at Chat Funnels for inviting me to participate in the um, Demand Gen Summit Spring 2021. Delighted to be here. So today I'm going to talk to you about what I call changing the conversation and driving demand. I thought it might be helpful to give you a little bit of context um, about me and also about Archive360. I'm the CMO here at Archive360. We are an enterprise software company and I've spent more than 20 years in global B2B marketing. Specifically, I've worked with companies in high growth areas um, usually in areas of disruptive technology, and specifically working with organizations looking to grow their customer base, their revenues, and in order to achieve that, in order to build their demand and their teams. If you have any questions uh, following on from my, um, from my session here today, uh, you can get hold of me at marie.patterson at archive360.com. And I've also provided a link to my LinkedIn. If you'd like to connect with me, just send me a message and look forward to following up with you. So here's a little bit about Archive360 to set uh, a context of why and how we're using chat and why we became a chat funnels customer. So let's look at what we do as an organization. Firstly, we are in a space um, called intelligent information archiving and management. Specifically, we help large organizations, so businesses as well as organizations in the uh, federal and local government space with their cloud adoption. The first thing we help them with is moving um, to Microsoft 365 to help them retire legacy applications running on premises. And the organizations that we work with are particularly concerned about what this is going to mean to their data, to their electronic records in terms of security, privacy, things like data sovereignty, where's the data actually going to live and a broad range of compliance and risk issues. The second thing that our customers are concerned about is once the data is in the cloud, how can they access it securely um, so they can extract the maximum amount of risk out of, out of the data? So that's a little bit about Archive360. If you're interested in checking us out, www.archive360.com. In terms of who we sell to, as an enterprise software company, we sell to a very large buying group. The buying team can be uh, tens, if not over a hundred individuals across a broad range of personas and titles. Clearly IT is in the mix and people in the CISO's office, but we also sell to the line of business. It, for instance, um, in the legal department, uh, in compliance, in records management, as well as broad line of business. And today we also work with individuals who are uh, chief data officers. I talked a little bit about our customers. One of the things that um, is fairly generic across all of our customers is they tend to be in very highly regulated industries. So think financial services or healthcare or energy and many of our customers are global. And that's going to be very important when we come to looking at uh, what some of the issues are that we're looking to address. And in particular, what our customers needs are when they come to our website. So thinking about the challenges that we face and some of the challenges that we were looking to address um, when we were bringing chat. In particular, um, as I mentioned, we're dealing with multiple buyers, um, each of them with very different and specific requirements. As an organization, we have a broad set of solutions, each of which address specific pain points, depending who we sell to, 
So it's not a sort of a, a one size fits all or um, a generic set of, of business issues that we're looking to address. On the next slide, I'm going to talk a lot more about the expectations of today's B2B buyer. One of the things that our team is constantly aware of as we're trying to engage buyers and as we think about demand gen and go to market is who are our buyers? What are their concerns? And how do they want to buy? And we'll touch on that a little bit more. Along with that, our buyers are at different stages of their buying journey. Again, we'll touch on that in the next slide. But we know that many of our buyers are still very early on in their buying journey. So they're still in that educating or exploring um, process. However, again, one of the things that we're acutely aware of is that educating and exploring for buyers isn't something that begins and ends um, right at the beginning of the buying cycle or just at the beginning of the funnel. It's something that continues throughout the buying journey. Um, and the last thing is that this is, this is something that, that is in transition uh, in terms of our buyers and the cloud. So for many of our buyers, this is something new. Um, many of them are in new roles. And our role as a vendor therefore changes extensively. So let's take a look at what I mean by the change in buyer journey. And again, all of this is to provide some context for what we're doing with chat and why I talk about it in terms of changing the conversation. Changing the conversation isn't just um, the buyer changing the conversation. It's clearly us as a vendor needing to change the conversation and how we interact with our buyers. This sort of spaghetti diagram um, comes courtesy of Gartner Group, who've done a lot of research about today's B2B buyers, who they are and how they want to buy. And not that long ago, maybe we used to think about the buying journey as something fairly linear. As this diagram shows, the B2B buyer journey is anything but linear these days. Um, you know, someone's going to start over here with problem identification, and then they may go over here to build requirements, and then they may come back to problem identification. Hopefully you get the picture that A, it's complex, B, there's no sort of defined path. And what that means is that for, for us as vendors, we need to be wherever the buyer wants to be and engage with them at every stage in that buying journey, understanding that A, we may not understand uh, where their starting point is, so where the buyer is in their buying journey when they're engaging with us, what they did previously and what they're going to do next. So it makes it a lot more complicated, but it also means that as vendors, we need to rethink, I believe that, that for us, we've had to rethink how, we, how and where we want to have conversations with our buyers. Hopefully all, that, all of that makes sense in terms of an introduction. So these are the goals that we set ourselves. Um, by way of background, again, um, uh, when I joined Archive360 about 18 months ago, uh, the company had implemented Drift um, Drift is um, uh, an organization and a technology that I was very, very familiar with. Um, but I was also extremely familiar with uh, chat funnels. I'd had the pleasure of working with Billy Bateman prior to joining Archive360. So uh, when I joined Archive360, I actually engaged chat funnels to help us uh, make a much better job of our Drift implementation and usage. And when Billy asked me if um, uh, I would consider becoming one of the um, early adopters of the chat funnel technology, I jumped at the chance. Um, but these are the goals that we set ourselves and hopefully based on what I had talked about previously, it's going to make a lot of sense to you. The first thing is um, 
uh, and I'll try not to read everything that's on this slide. As a vendor, it's crucial for us to sell in the way in which the buyer wants to buy. And that means that we need to make the buying experience a lot easier. And that starts with the way in which we engage with buyers right on our website. So regardless of why someone is coming to our website, we need to be there providing the information or providing the access to contacts that is appropriate for the visitor. So as I said, it might be someone who's coming to the website because they are at the point in their buying journey where they're ready to speak to a salesperson. And goodness knows we don't want to delay that. The minute someone says, I'd like to speak to somebody now, we need to engage with that person as quickly as possible and in as appropriate a manner as possible. It might be that the buyer is still at the educational phase and really all they want to do is to get access to the right information that's going to ask their, answer their questions. And they may want to be left alone and that's all they want to do. They really don't want to speak to a salesperson. However, they may also want to schedule a demo. They may want pricing or it might be something else. The point being, regardless of what brings the visitor to the website, we need to be able to engage with the visitor on their terms and connect them to what they're looking for as quickly as possible. The second thing that as a team, we believe is absolutely crucial for our buyers and also for the success of what we're trying to do with chat is to make sure that we're connecting the visitor with the information or the contact details that's contextually accurate. So for instance, if they're on the home page, that experience needs to be different to, from uh, if they're on um, a high intent page, for instance, pricing or request a demo. Clearly as an organization, and my number one priority as a CMO is to increase website information and to turn that into leads and selling opportunities for our sales team. That's my number one priority as a CMO, revenue. However, I don't believe that we can do that without addressing points one and two. Finally, um, when uh, someone puts their hands up and says, I'd like to speak to somebody or I'd like a demo, I was interested in looking at how we could use our chat technology to actually accelerate the internal lead follow-up process. And I'll touch on that just a little bit later, but probably not as much as some of the earlier points above. The final point, and hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that to you when I show you what we're doing, is given the volume of, of inbound inquiries and um, the diverse nature of the, of the inquiries that we're receiving, I also wanted to look at how we could use chat to start the qualification process. Um, probably like many organizations, a lot of people come to our website and sort of press the button saying, I, I, I want pricing now or I'd like a demo. Um, and uh, that information is, is important. Um, it's not something that, given that we're an enterprise software company, we're just going to be handing out to everybody. We are going to withhold that somewhat until we know that someone is ready or until we have the right information to give somebody accurate pricing information. So we want to use the bot uh, to help qualify the inbound inquiries. So those were the top goals um, when we engage chat funnels, and those are still our goals today. So let's have a look at the project. Now, when I say project, this is an ongoing project as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's something that with the team, we revisit with chat funnels on a weekly basis and internally with my team, again, we're looking at on a weekly basis, um, separately from chat funnels, we're looking at it uh, across many of our metrics. So the first thing that we looked at in terms of our project, and this was really to do with prioritization, 
is um, which are our most visited web pages versus which are our high intent pages. I mentioned that for us, those are things like someone wanting to schedule a demo, uh, someone looking to get uh, pricing information um, versus our targeted content. When I mention targeted content, um, it usually means gated content, um, but it may also may mean specific content. Uh, for instance, if we have an ongoing campaign around some particular pieces of content, I may want to be um, putting um, a bot on that content. Again, just because I know that we're going to be driving or hopefully driving a lot of, of, um, of web traffic uh, to that particular piece of content. And I want to be able to optimize that content or optimize our opportunity to convert a visitor into a lead using chat. So those are uh, some of the ways in which we look at, um, firstly, where and why should we be placing bots on our website? Um, the next thing uh, in the project, again, it's something that we looked at um, as we first deployed our bots and that we looked at on a continuous basis is, um, yes, we do have some custom bots, uh, some, um, uh, I beg your pardon, we do have some generic bots, but by and large, I want to make sure that um, in the same way, um, uh, someone walking through our website isn't going to see the same content on every page, um, depending what they're looking at, hopefully it's going to be addressing their specific interest. I want to make sure that that experience um, also holds true uh, when a bot pops on the, on the page. So um, as much as possible, let's make sure that the bots are customized, again, uh, for specific pages, for specific pieces of content. And as you'll see, um, given the number of options usually that we're offering the visitor, we want to make sure that each of the deliverables or each of the offers that someone's being served up via a bot is customized depending where they are on our website. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the uh, chat funnels team drills me on this and I, and I drill my team and drill myself on the importance of A-B testing. I can't stress the importance of this enough. Um, uh, I'm sure that many of you are already doing it and it just comes as a matter of course, but it's something that we have to remind ourselves of, of on, a, on a regular basis. Just taking the time to, uh, to do some testing, particularly with new bots, I find it's very important. Um, and um, sometimes when we have a difference of opinion, sometimes when we're, you know, when we're working with chat funnels, our internal team will be recommending one way, chat funnels team may be saying, well, this is the experience that we've been seeing with another customer or down the line, um, maybe, uh, you know, we decided to go live with, with a bot. Um, we're maybe not seeing the, um, uh, the kind of results we were hoping for. And so we'll switch it up and we'll maybe do A-B testing at that stage to see, okay, when we make this change, uh, what's the difference that we see? Um, that's been extremely useful in helping us test out some new ideas um, and something that I highly recommend to you. The next thing I put down is live chat option. Now I mentioned to you earlier that our customers are, um, are global. I'm actually based in the United States. I realize uh, that may not be um, entirely obvious from my accent. Um, uh, my team is based in North America and in Europe. Um, so for live chat, um, I have coverage for part of the day, but certainly not for 24 hours. And so um, one of the things that I've looked at and particularly working with the chat funnels team is when does it make sense um, to be offering up live chat and when doesn't it? And in particular, given that we do have some limitations, 
let's see what that's uh, some limitations in terms of coverage, I should say. Um, how are we then going to be using the chat and offering live chats? Also aware of the fact that depending when someone engages with us, we know that um, there may not be anybody available um, uh, for the live chat option. The next thing was to do some work on um, when the bot should be firing. And that goes back to the customization based on specific pages. So I'm going to be looking for the bot to fire um, differently when someone um, arrives, for instance, on our homepage to when someone um, wants to schedule a demo or request pricing versus when someone is um, on our blog or on one of our blog pages. So um, a very significant portion of our web traffic is driven by our blogs. Uh, we have a, 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 a massive um, subscriber base for our blogs and, and also our podcasts. We know that a lot of individuals want to come to our website um, to read our content as part of their educational journey. And so we, I believe that we need to strike a balance between the bot being there to um, be a friendly help, you know, I hope you're enjoying uh, the blog content, how can I help you, versus just being annoying, quite honestly. So um, that's something that I recommend that you look at and play around with. I mentioned A-B testing. Um, testing constantly, um, we have put internally a fairly strict um, rollout process for new bots or for changing bots um, that allows us to make sure that any changes we want to make or um, any new bots that we roll out just go through um, a really good due diligence process. Um, uh, I think it's worth spending, for me certainly, it's worth spending a little bit of extra time on the testing just to make sure that you've got it right. And that was just my personal preference. And then the last piece, I mentioned that the project isn't something that we started with and, you know, and I looked at it, well, now we're live, we're good to go. Um, we uh, look at the bots, um, uh, ind individual bots, we look at them on an aggregate basis, on a weekly basis, and then we look at things on a monthly basis and a quarterly basis. So with the team, as our business evolves, as we're aware of different customer needs, as we develop new web pages and offerings and so forth, I'm constantly looking to see where and how we can optimize um, the use of our bots. The other thing is um, if you're a chat funnels customer, one of the things that I believe that we are extremely fortunate with, with chat funnels, is clearly the chat funnels team has access to the successes and failures. You know, they're things that, that uh, when I say failures, they're areas that don't always work as we expect. But as customers, I think securely, um, chat funnels is able to bring that experience and that information to us. So um, if you're not already doing so, I would encourage you to leverage the lessons learned and the best practices that chat funnels um, can bring and that we as customers um, are able to learn from each other. Okie doke. Um, showtime. So hopefully I can uh, do this correctly. And I'm actually gonna take you over to the Archive 360 website. So here we are. Um, I'm on the home page, and I should probably have put myself in um, uh, uh, in a different mode. I'm I'm cookied all over our website, but in um, uh, on our home page, as you can see, um, our home page bot is more or less immediately going to kick in. Let's have a look, quick look at what that looks like on the home page, so you can understand what I meant by. Um, different options depending on the different visitor. Okay, so um, right away, 
we're going to be offering someone um, two different options. They can learn more about us. If someone comes to the website and maybe they're not entirely sure what they want at this stage and they click more options, let's have a look at that. Straight off the bat, the bot is going to tell somebody or ask somebody, what brings you here? Is there a particular problem that I can help you with? Um, this bot was based on us saying, well, there are probably three buckets um, that bring somebody to the website. So let's go for one of these, uh, but it might be another. Let's say somebody um, comes to our website, they come to the home page, and yeah, they're interested in data migration. Straight away, um, the bot is going to say, well, I can help you book a demo or I can provide you with more information. And if they want more information, um, they're going to be served up two different pieces of content um, that they can look at. Hopefully that gave you a sense of what we look like on the homepage. Um, let's try pricing and see what that's going to look like. Okay. Um, someone comes to the website and um, says, get a quote. Uh, we made the decision that um, uh, if someone says, get a quote, we're not going to allow them to fill in a form. Um, it's going to go directly to the bot. So uh, click get a quote and straight away, the bot's going to kick in. Hopefully that made sense, you saw that. So someone comes to our website, they want pricing information, they click get a quote. We're not giving anybody the option anymore to fill in a form. They have to go uh, via the bot. Now, the reason for that is um, previously, one of the things I'd noticed is um, a bunch of people would just sort of fill in a form and, and it would be, um, uh, maybe a little bit of a phishing exercise. I reference the fact that we want to use the bot as a way to uh, qualify um, some of the inquiries. And we found that um, uh, switching over to bot only um, certainly qualifies out the time wasters and we get a much higher um, uh, result of inbound uh, and of inquiry type. So let's see what that's looking like. Again, um, we've put uh, the type of pricing into one, two, three, four, five different buckets uh, based on what we know are the top business issues that people come to us with, um, but they can also click on something else. Uh, so if someone clicks on application retirement, uh, we're going to ask them for the name of uh, who do they work with. Uh, so I'm going to type in Archive 360. And uh, tell me more about your project. I need to migrate uh, two terabytes of data. Okay, and... Um, then the bot's going to ask, uh, how would you like to receive your pricing information? And you can click, I want to get it by phone or email or talk to an expert. So in this case, I'm going to click email and it's going to ask me for my business address. I'm going to put in a false email address just so you can see what that's like. Now, here's something interesting. Um, once that has been, the, uh, once we've connected with somebody specific to uh, following up with them on pricing, um, I, we wanted to make sure that we're engaging uh, with um, any visitors for as long as possible. So rather than the conversation just ending there, um, we're actually switching up uh, the bot to uh, take somebody to some content in this case, we're sending them to the blog. Okay, so that is um, a very quick guided tour of uh, what we look like from the homepage 
uh, from um, one of our web pages to something high intent like pricing. Let's switch back to uh, my, the presentation and, um, and then I can wrap it up. So I want to just show you some results. Um, uh, this is actually taken out of uh, one of my reports from Salesforce. Um, and it's looking at um, uh, leads, um, I believe this is over the past month. Um, and I blanked out some of the details, just, um, uh, just uh, stuff that, that doesn't necessarily need to be shared outside the organization. Um, column one here, 699, um, uh, we've run um, uh, a series of webinars and events through people like Compliance Week. And I would have expected that um, to be generating a lot of leads for us. Um, column two, um, and really the highest column in terms of, you know, high intent inbounds, uh, this is from chat. This is directly from chat funnels. So the point, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and hopefully the point I'm making here is that um, we found that by um, uh, following some very specific steps and being fairly precise, working extremely closely with chat funnels, we've, dri we've driven some um, fantastic uh, lead generation, um, high intent lead generation for our organization. Uh, a couple of points uh, to finish up on, uh, for those of you um, in the B2B space and uh, working globally, um, the thing that I found most interesting this year is that the leads have been global. There is no um, sort of generic, uh, more coming in from one part of the world uh, than another. Uh, we have engagement from organizations of all sizes and across all industries as well. So we've had people engaging with us from um, US federal government for, on projects, um, uh, massive uh, multi-billion dollar global organizations, as well as smaller organizations, and across all personas. Um, hopefully that wraps it up, and I've given you um, a little bit of a taste of how Archive360 is working with chat um, to change the conversation on our side, and change the conversation in a way that engages more of our visitors.